Welcome to the DaVinci Academy Histology video course. The entire video course is available on YouTube and covers all of the fundamental principles of histology and relevant cell biology. You can find all of the videos from the course by clicking the histology playlist link in the description below, and then you can access the corresponding practice questions and histology lab videos by going to our website, which is also linked in the description below. So in this lecture, we're gonna talk about a special type of connective tissue called adipose tissue. So first, what is adipose tissue? Well, it consists of cells called adipocytes and its surrounding connective tissue. And we'll talk about adipocytes in more detail in a second here. Adipose tissue can be found in small amounts of tissues within organs. So it can serve as kind of padding or insulation within organs or as large masses of tissue known as fat. And so when people talk about losing fat, they're talking about losing adipose tissue. It comprises about 20 to 25% of body weight in women and 15 to 20% of body weight in men. And then it's divided into two categories, white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue. And this is based mainly on the histological appearance, but also on the function as well. And so this is a great example of adipose tissue here. You can see that it's filled with adipocytes. This is white adipose tissue. All of these white or clear inclusions like this, these are all part components of an adipocyte. So this is a and a nice image here that gives you a sense of what adipose tissue looks like. So the actual cell itself, adipocytes, they differentiate from mesenchymal precursor cells induced by insulin. They're embryologically derived from the mesoderm layer. And then lastly here, they do not undergo cell division. So they're considered a static cell population and, it could be, and they're considered to be in the G0 phase of the cell cycle. So if you remember the cell cycle, you have the G1 phase, then you go into the S phase, then you go into the G2 phase, and then you have the M phase. Remember we talked about this in the cytology lectures. And so this is, you know, the, the cycles that you go through, the phases of the cycle you go through to undergo cell division, but there are some cell populations that exit G1 and they're in the G0 phase or, and they are considered static cell populations. Other cells that are in this are, if you recall, cardiac muscle tissue, and then also neurons in the nervous system. So again, if we come down here and look at, this is a great image also of adipocytes within breast tissue. And so you can see here, here's the, they have this roundish shape to them. And then in this case, in the white adipose tissue, you have the peripherally located nucleus like this and the peripherally located cytoplasm right around, essentially around this inclusion body here. And we'll go into more detail on this in a few slides here. So from a function standpoint, adipocytes play a key role in metabolism. They're acted upon by the two hormones that are the two major players in metabolism, both insulin and glucagon. So just to digress here with a little bit of biochemistry, if you recall, insulin not only promotes the uptake of glucose, but it also goes beyond that. It promotes the conversion of glucose to glycerol, glycogen, and triglycerides. So if we just do a little schematic down here, if you have glucose here, this is within the cell, and remember glucose undergoes glycolysis, form pyruvate, it can also be converted into glycogen, which is a storage form of glucose. And then when you get to pyruvate, you can be formed lactate, and this would be considered anaerobic respiration. And then it can also be converted into acetyl-CoA which is sort of a, a major player in metabolism, kind of an intersection point, if you will. And you'll see what, what I mean by that in a second here. So acetyl-CoA can then go through the citric acid cycle. And that's considered aerobic respiration. And that produ produces electron carriers, NADH and FADH2, that then go to the electron transport chain to generate ATP. Now, from a triglyceride standpoint, so you have your adipose tissue over here, your adipocyte, and they store triglycerides, which is essentially glycerol and three fatty acids. So acetyl-CoA can also be used to synthesize fatty acids, and then fatty acids can be combined with glycerol to form triglycerides, which are then stored in adipose tissue or within the adipocyte. And then during fasting, you can break triglycerides down into free fatty acids, 
and then free fatty acids can then be broken down into acetyl-CoA, which then can enter the citric acid cycle, provide those electron carriers to the electron transport chain, and provide a lot of ATP in the fasting state. So as far as how the hormones come into play here, so insulin, insulin will promote the formation of glycogen, it promotes the formation of glycerol, it also promotes the, the synthesis of triglycerides. And then on the flip side, it'll actually come over here and inhibit triglyceride breakdown. Versus glucagon will gonna, is going to do just the opposite. So glucagon, if we draw this here, glucagon is going to inhibit triglyceride synthesis. So it's going to act opposed to this, and then it's actually going to stimulate triglyceride breakdown because this is during glucagon is is released during the fasting state. Insulin is released during the fed state. Fasting state, you need to break down fat so you can get energy. And it's going to stimulate triglyceride breakdown via this enzyme known as hormone sensitive lipase. And in this case, the hormone is glucagon, and lipase are just enzymes that break down fat. And then on the flip side here, glycogen is also going to inhibit glycogen synthesis and actually promote the breakdown of glycogen back to glucose. So glucagon is going to stimulate that as well. Because again, during the fasting state, you're not consuming any glucose, so you need to break down glycogen to give you free glucose. So this is a very basic overview of this, but it, it's just to give you an idea of how adipocytes play a role in metabolism. Just a few other points here. Adipocytes, they undergo hypertrophy. Remember in, in the cytology lecture, we talked about hyperplasia versus hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is when cells get, get larger. Remember, adipocytes are in the G0 phase. They, they're a static cell population. They're not going to undergo cell division. And, and so what happens is, is they grow they undergo hypertrophy. And so the reason they're growing is to accommodate increased production of triglycerides. So they need to be larger in order to store more triglycerides, such as during obesity. The other thing that adipocytes do is they secrete a few hormones. So if we draw an adipocyte down here. So one hormone they'll secrete is called leptin. And leptin actually suppresses the appetite. So it comes up here and acts in the hypothalamus to essentially feed back and inhibit appetite. So, it, you know, the adipocytes grow, they've, they're storing triglycerides, you've got enough energy, you don't, and from a meta metabolic standpoint, you don't need to eat anymore, and so it'll secrete leptin as kind of a, you know, hey, we're okay, we've got enough triglycerides to, to get us by, we don't need to consume anything more. It can also stimulate metabolism in other cells. It also secretes a molecule known as angiotensinogen, and this is eventually converted into angiotensin 2, which actually stimulates vasoconstriction in, bloods, in blood vessels. And that can, can le actually lead to hypertension, especially if you're secreting a lot of this, such as during obesity. The, other, the last hormone we'll talk about here is ghrelin and ghrelin is secreted by the GI tract. And ghrelin is sort of the opposite of leptin. It actually stimulates your appetite or stimulates hunger. So now that we've talked about some of the cellular biology and biochemistry, let's actually get into the histology here. So first, white adipose tissue. is the, Again, it's the predominant type of adipose tissue. It primarily functions to store triglycerides as lipid inclusions within the cytoplasm. So you have your cytoplasm like this, and then you have this large inclusion like this. So what that does is it actually kind of displaces your nucleus out to the, the periphery of the cell and actually kind of displaces, since this is a, a, you know, a fat inclusion body, you remember lipids and water don't mix so well because lipids are hydrophobic. So it's actually going to push some of the cytoplasm also to the periphery of the cell. And you'll see that within the histological appearance. It has a unilocular pattern. That's because you essentially have this one large lipid inclusion. And you can see a lot of this, these here. This is a great example of white adipose tissue. So you can see here, here's that large inclusion. Here's that peripherally located nucleus. You can see the cytoplasm here in this pinkish eosinophilic appearance here. 
that's also located on the peripheral aspect of the cell because again this inclusion body is kind of pushing everything out to the side the other thing i forgot to mention here is that white adipose tissue from a function standpoint also provides like i said earlier cushion and insulation for organs and then the last thing here is that each of these adipocytes are surrounded by a basal lamina that contains reticular fibers so brown adipose tissue this is found in humans during infancy and it's actually rare in adults we lose brown adipose tissue as we grow older major difference here is it contains large amounts of mitochondria so it contains numerous amounts of mitochondria within this within the cytoplasm and this is because its primary function is not triglyceride storage it's actually non-shivering heat production and so the way it does that is it contains a protein called thermogenin which acts as an uncoupling agent in the mitochondria so we'll take a break here for a second and show you a little bit more biochemistry as well so if you remember you have this inner membrane in the mitochondria like this and then you have these protein complexes complexes one two four and then you have atp synthase which is shown here and this does just what you think it does it synthesizes atp and so this is the electron transport chain and this is within the mitochondria and so if you remember the citric acid cycle which also occurs in the mitochondria is this series of reactions which produces these electron carriers known as NADH and FADH2 and so these then travel to the electron transport chain where they undergo a series of redox reactions and so what these redox reactions do is for these complexes they power movement of hydrogen ions actually into this intermembrane space here and so what this does is it actually creates an electrochemical gradient because by creating this high concentration of hydrogen ions in this area here in this intermembrane space and so by the time you get down to ATP synthase these hydrogen ions are then going to flow back down their gradient through the protein ATP synthase and that's going to actually power ATP production so the way an uncoupling agent like thermogenin works is it essentially comes in here and it pokes a hole in the membrane and so it, what happens is that instead of just flowing down ATP synthase they can actually just leak out from the intermembrane space back across the membrane and this actually dissipates as heat so this is how they produce heat so it's kind of a, a futile cycle from an from a energy production standpoint you actually don't produce much ATP you produce produce a lot of heat and what's interesting is lipolysis frees fatty acids to undergo oxidation for heat production so if you break down triglycerides into fatty acids remember then they get converted into acetyl coa which then enters into the citric acid cycle so fatty acid breakdown also provides a lot of power for this heat production cycle histologically very different appearance as you can see from white adipose tissue the numerous mitochondria and dense vascularity create a dark brown appearance or a really eosinophilic appearance as you can see in here the nuclei are, are located more centrally and then as far as a pattern goes it's a multilocular pattern versus a unilocular pattern that you'll see with white adipose tissue this is just a table to kind of sum up everything from the lecture just so you can have this down white adipose tissue again is your entire lifetime versus brown is just during infancy composition white adipose tissue is mostly lipids some water and that just corresponds to its function of storing triglycerides brown adipose tissue is the majority of it is water it does have a significant lipid component as well though and again that corresponds to its function of heat generation histological appearance again it's unilocular for white adipose with that peripherally located nucleus and cytoplasm Brown adipose is multilocular with a central nucleus and the numerous mitochondria. Thank you for watching this video from the Da Vinci Academy Histology video course, which is completely available on YouTube. To access the corresponding practice questions and histology lab videos, go to our website using the link in the description below.